For the first time since 1987, Johns Hopkins is a national champion. It is Blue Jay Way in Philadelphia. The school has won its eighth national championship. Being immersed with a group of guys that were, I would say, had an uncommon commitment to a common bond, getting along with each other, looking after one another, making sure that everybody kind of lived their life the right way off the field, knowing that the product that came on the field was, was secondary to everything that we were working on as a, as a group of guys. And I saw that from the night of my official visit to the day that I graduated. All right, let's get to it. Here we go. It is not about anybody that's outside of our locker room. It is about the 60 guys on our locker room operating every single day, doing the right thing the right way. Vision for the 2023 season. You know, be the best representatives of, uh, of this university, of this lacrosse program. Be highly competitive, be tireless and selfless workers and teammates. And just love the process and, and what we're doing. Oh, it was probably the best times of my life. Uh, there's nothing like being out on Homewood Field. Yeah. It's currently September 17th, 7.45, as the Blue Jays just dominated a lift suited up and now we're on the legendary Homewood Field. There's something special about this team early in September. The juice they had in the weight room, the juice they have on the field, uh, you know, they're searching for something. You know, I think that loss they had to Notre Dame in the quarters has been fueling them all summer into the fall and obviously going to be into the spring. The city of brotherly love. Two Kavanaugh's leading the Irish to the national semifinals. I decided to do a doc on this team because I know they're gonna have something special in their back pocket this year. With Coach Milliman at the helm and three alumni as assistants, you know, this staff is tighter than ever. I'm excited to dive into this team for the next 48 hours and show you guys what the Johns Hopkins Blue Jays are all about. Is Hopkins back? Let's find out. We all know that was brutal. There's not a single person in here that should be confident with what we just put out on this field. It wasn't fing loud enough, there were passes this all over the place. No fing backup. We got guys taking balls out of the net to keep the drill going. It's not how we fing do it. It's Monday morning. It's how you fing tone for the week. The right way, not that fing way. On three set, go back out there and be loud, styled. I want to back up this hill, baby. Let's go. What does it mean to you to get named captain? Tough to put into words. Thinking about all the, the great players, leaders that have come before me that have worn the worn the sea is pretty breathtaking, honestly. I think that the you know, some of the other guys would say the same things, that it that it means a lot and it's it's really tough to put that into words what it means to be captain at a program like Hopkins. Come on, Mike. 
Gigantic news in the sport today as Johns Hopkins and head coach Dave Petromala have decided to part ways, ending Petro's 20 year run. What was the coaching change like? It was challenging, definitely very challenging. There was a lot of lows in the beginning and a lot of learning to do. Um, but, you know, I think we're all better people for it, better players, and we kind of know how to lead a team just through all the, all the adversity we've been through, so. The coaching change uh, was definitely something that I was new to, kind of going through the recruiting process. That's something that I didn't want. I wanted to play for one coach all four years. But honestly, it's a tough situation, but I kind of applaud the senior class for sticking together and kind of being the glue um, throughout that movement. A lot of people could have left, could have gone different places, could have followed. Um, so we really had a good, a good group of senior class that stuck together and kind of saw it through and I think that it's all coming to fruition right now. There you go, good body Tristan! Now you gotta win the ball! This is the exciting side for me, this is where I go help one of the four position groups because I don't have one on my own. <laughs> coming into a job that's had a head coach here for so long, what was that like uh, for you? Do you feel any pressure? Yeah, of course. I don't think you can you can come to Hopkins without feeling that that pressure. I don't think you can replace a legendary coach, the all-time winningest coach in our program's history, without you know feeling the intensity of, of following in those those steps. And uh, I don't think it, it's my responsibility to to necessarily follow uh, Coach Petromala. Uh, my job is to coach the best version of the 2024 Blue Jays this year. And and every year it's it's really just uphold that standard and, and continue to you know build on on a tradition of excellence that's that's been here long before any of us. This program is just so deep and rich in the tradition and the history that it's overwhelming to try and tie yourself to that in every step and everything that you do. It's really just your responsibility to be the best version of where we are right now and, and continue that, that long blue line that we talk about and, and, and where it's come from and where it's going and, and, and add our, our piece to it. Everybody echo! One, two, go, Good job, Stu. Steady influence out there, Stu. Go, 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 go. Find that, find that, good. There it is. Good talk, Vern. Good talk, Vern. That's it, that's it. Don't get quiet, don't let it get quiet. Great job, mate. Right Two hands. Shoot it. Whoa. That's yours, BG. You got the call to come back to Hopkins. What was that feeling like for you? It wasn't the first thing that went through my mind when the position came open for the head coach, but I had also spent most of my life since 2007 dreaming about coming back here in a paid position in a capacity where I would be able to work with kids full time. And when you think about something like that nonstop and you're always working towards your goal and then your goal opens up the door, you're never really ready for it. And I knew that it was what I wanted to do. I knew it was my calling. I asked a couple people. I actually called, called Coach Petromala and asked for permission to come back here. If that gives you any insight into the relationship that I have with him. What was that conversation like? Hard, very difficult but he, he gave me the blessing and told me that it would be okay. And I mean, I knew I wanted to say yes to Coach Milliman right away, but I made him sweat it out for two days anyways. <laughs> oh, off the meat. What does the history of this program mean to you? Shoot, we've been playing lacrosse here since 1883. So there are a lot of guys that, you know, their hearts have beaten in that jersey and, and breathe life into a jersey. You know, you walk around the Cordish Center or, you know, uh, you go over to the, the to the original gymnasium. I mean, there's history all around this place. And you, and you just see the, the excellence that had preceded you. You know, it just sort of challenges each and every day to, to bring your best. You know, try to impart on these guys is like, what you're doing each and every day, is that going to leave the jersey in a better place than you found it? Who's ready to rotate? Ah, oh, goodness gracious. Hey, you're gonna have somebody out of the box, out of the box, out of the box. Good, good. That's fine. Should I like back Give yourself, yeah, give yourself an extra second. Like you got, that guy was on your hands. Like it's probably pretty hard to throw it like this when he's all over you. So take an extra second, get away with your feet, get comfortable. 
we try to make sure that we're not getting too wrapped up in, in what happened last year and not too wrapped up in what's happening in the spring. Like we're, we're trying to worry about the fall. We're trying to become the best version of us by the time that we play the alumni on this Saturday, you know, to be able to have the opportunity to come back and help these young guys uh, go through the, the same thing that I did, you know, is, is certainly a special, special opportunity. Good job, Cello. Keep running, Cello. Good job, good job, good job. Next six, next six. Please don't walk off this wheel. Together on three, one, two, three. Yeah. When people say Hopkins is back, what does that mean to you? That they have no idea what's been going on here because in my mind we never left and we've always been a part of the Division One landscape. We're on TV every single weekend. Even when we're not winning games, people still talk about us. It'd be like saying, oh, the Yankees are back. They've never left. I struggle with that phrase. I think the second that the standard at Hopkins is a quarterfinal appearance is the second that Hopkins is, isn't what it is anymore. To me, like the standard is not what we did last year. Uh, the standard is winning a national championship at this place. When people say Hopkins is back, uh, we hear it a lot and you know, you see it all over social media, but we try not to focus on that just because when people say that, it just kind of, it's kind of reassuring to know that we're, we're building something that um, the people who've come before us have built. You know, we try not to look too much into that and kind of just focus on ourselves. I think people always like to group us into stuff or thing, but we all know that the standard's national championship, so until we kind of host that thing, it's all, it's all just talk. We're gonna see how the sophomores live on the Hopkins lacrosse team. Yo, yo, what's up? I'm uh, number 16, Matt Galson. Number 45, Eric McDonald. Welcome to the uh, to the penthouse. We're in the living room. It's where we chill out most of the time. With the TV right there. Still waiting on the upgrade from uh, Rich Mom. These are the boys. Oh, Nick Chuck Hunter. I'm Nicholas Lane, number eight, sophomore. Chuck Rawson, number 37, freshman. Hunter Chabet, uh, freshman from Cleveland. Three Canadians in here? Yeah, yeah three, three Canadians. Canadians. Brooks English, number 25, best child player on the team. Buddy, buddy, <laughs> buddy, I'm, I'm six and four not against them. Come on. That's we're well, gonna have the freak, can we dive in? Yeah, you can dive in. That's it? <laughs> My room, not, again, not a lot going on. Still waiting on the, the decorations or my dad. Little PC right there. Zip, Valentine. Zip. Yeah. Just one quick, simple. one quick glance. Yeah, yeah, keep it simple. I don't know how I got the smallest room, but it's all right. If you go anywhere in the world, Hunter, and with who, who would you go with Ooh. and why? Ooh. Ireland, the Tiger Woods, or something playing some golf. Spain. With the girl or now? Yeah, with the girl. Oh. No. All right, we're at a THB here, the best bagel shop in all of Baltimore. Gonna get a nice egg and cheese, start the day off, middle of the day. Hunter, what do you get on your bagel? Egg and cheese with absolutely no meat. Not a big bacon guy, so let's get after it. Any sauce? <laughs> no sauce. Plain Jane, plain Jane. <laughs> Wow, this actually looks banging. This is the go-to spot. How many days a week you guys have this? I'm not crazy often. Maybe a little Sunday morning excursion. Here. Yeah. Walk over here. Mm -hmm. Look at that look, right? Fire. I'm giving it a, uh, we want to get on camera? Okay, come here, let me get you on camera. I'm Caprice from CHB. Come check us out. We got some good bagels, cookies, muffins, Breakfast sandwiches, whatever you like. What are, you, what are your thoughts on the Hopkins men's lacrosse team? They're good guys. Y'all are awesome. They're great guys. Awesome, great. You gotta come again. You gotta get season ticks. I got you. But other than that, y'all enjoy y'all, you know, y'all food. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Come back. Yeah, we'll be back. I'll Thank be you. We'll be back. All right. Thank you. No problem. Uh, we're out here, upperclassman house at the Johns Hopkins University. We're going to see how the men's lacrosse team lives. Let's do it. What's up, guys? Brendan Grimes here, number nine. Dylan Bauer, number seven. My name's Scott, number 18. What's up? Cam Chevette, number 17. Brent Martin, number 12. Welcome to 219. Come on in. All right, cool. So we're here. We got uh, some lockers. It's nice, nice little area to hang up our jackets and everything like that. Some lacrosse gear. It's nice and convenient for us. I live here. Brendan lives here. And then... We got Casey McDermott, number 33. Marcelo Artiaga, number 48. And Ryan Evans, number 49. A few of the guys here. It's Jacob Stabner, number 28. Maxie McCarthy, 91. Eric Chick, Warrior. Logan Callahan, number 5. Luke Moore, number 13. Jojo Todaro, 55. You got a pretty nice TV here. Uh, two flags. Turn around, you got a great flag behind you. And uh, some nice lights to highlight, you know, 
the absolute abundance that goes on in this room. How long has this been like a pass down the cross house? 10, 10 12 years. Yeah, long, long time. time. Ah, yes, yeah, so we got the uh, the kitchen over here. It's pretty nice area. We normally eat all together. It's the house. Here we got the stove and the oven and everything. We got an air fryer, coffee machine, the microwave, the smoothies, and everything like that over there. And uh, the best cook. Best cook. I'm gonna have to go with Marcelo. And who doesn't do the dishes though? Ryan Evans. Really? <laughs> They're all right here. It's all them right there. <laughs> we'll do a uh, Taco Tuesday sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Over here, we do a lot of Taco Tuesday at the at the crib. Uh, a lot of meals together. Who's the best cook in the house? <sighs> best cook? Gotta go with B Mart. Yeah. I really? B Mart. I yeah. like B Mart. That microwave right there hasn't been used. Built during the prohibition, um, but yeah. This is my room. I got a nice dresser here, bed in the corner, desk, all the necessities, some stuff on the walls here. Baltimore jersey from back in the day. TV mounted right there, some hats, some good stuff. Coming over here, we got the desk, academic weapon. How many yeah. hours are we clocking in here? On average, like an hour and a half, two hours a day, probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So. As you can see, we got a uh, nice, nice spacious uh, area, you know, clothes, a lot of good hats. One in the middle is my favorite. Got a nice TV. You know, what are we watching usually? What are we watching? Surf's up, huge. Surf's up? Disney movies, really? anything like that. You're a Marvel guy too. Huge. This is where I reside. You got a Park City sign up. One, there. Po oh, two, we have two, two posters. posters. You're a big hat guy, I can tell. Yeah, most of them are downstairs or stolen out of this house. So I don't have much up there right now, but usually I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody in here is a good dude. Yeah, so we don't have any problems. No drama here usually. Yeah. What's up? What's up? Welcome to the crib. I don't have a lot going on here. Got a couple pictures here, some family, some friends. Can you give us a quick five second tour of Peshko's room? Yeah. This is Peshko, number 51, uh, midfielder, senior. It's kind of got a weird smell in here. <laughs> That's been good. It's been a lot of fun. Living with these guys, so sweet. Oh! Inside the, the men's locker room. This quote means a lot to the team. It pretty much means it's the man in the, the arena by uh, Theodore Roosevelt. It means whenever you go on that field, no one else can say anything about it because you know the work you put in and you can't control what other people think. So, honestly, it means everything for what we embody here at Hopkins. You know, there's a lot outside noise, everything going on around you. So, when you strap it up, you go on there, you just worry about playing Johns Hopkins across. You know, being part of this and have the opportunity to even beat, beat Blue Jays is ridiculous. And, uh, you know, it's definitely something that I'm super privileged to be a part of and all the boys are, so. We got a bunch of the greats. Obviously, you'll see a bunch of names pop up. Terry Roydon, Big Del Dressel, Joe Cowan, Brian Kelly in the back. Uh, this is my favorite photo, for sure. Let's <laughs> go. <laughs> so, it's coming. Yeah. Hey. Hey. That's my brother. <laughs> That's awesome. Coach Cohen and I are going to reenact that when we win the national championship. BA yeah, is going to reenact that one. <laughs> no, that's that's the goal. Who do we want this to be? Dude. Oh. Samo Exo. Samo Exo, right there. Ah. That's where the game is. Shout out. Being born and raised here in Baltimore is the mecca of lacrosse here. Uh, yes. I mean, why wouldn't I answer that, right? A lot of it comes from just the history, right? The fact that we are probably one of the oldest lacrosse playing universities. Um, so I think on some level, like, yeah, some reverence should be paid to, to Baltimore, for sure. So this is the locker room. You guys keep your arm, get out. That's Coach Milliman, <laughs> the famous. Uh, this is where all the boys hang out before practice, after practice. Um, it's a hangout spot. This is, this, is where, this is the place to be on campus for us. And, uh, yeah, I'll show you around. Let's go. Yeah, give us a tour. Let's go. The nastiest players are in the middle aisle. Always. Absolutely. Um, you never know. There's always new stuff here, so we just got this. That's uh, yeah. Give us a, give us so, a little gear bag tour. What do we got going for uh, Hopkins this year? We got the one Johns Hopkins uh, windbreaker. Black long sleeve Hopkins, the standard. We got the Hopkins joggers. All right, we got the Homewood shirts. Classic yeah. gritty blue tee. It's a must. We got the Hop shorts, Under Armour, white, gray issue shirt. These are like the Brooklyn specials. Oh, you, we wow. wear them well. <laughs> wear them high. It's up to you. I don't know. Whatever you want to rock. Uh, we got the joggers. I'm pretty sure we're gonna wear these in practice this year. This Central is like Christmas socks. every day. This is awesome. So I share this with uh, Big Scott Cackle. Uh, I 
botch that. Skackle. Kyle, <laughs> Kyle Skackle. I love Baltimore for the fact that I've been able to get out into the community and do new things. I've been involved in Team Impact um, with Kyle Skackle. He's been absolutely amazing. And I think he knows that he's had way more of an impression on me than I can have on him. Pretty standard lockup setup. Obviously got the snacks, powering up. Cleats the shoes across the top. Setter set up is how everyone does it. Shoulder pads, elbow pads, gloves like that. That car <laughs> <laughs> Some plays. Some tape. A lot of tape stealers on this team. Yeah. Take take a look around. Look around. Yeah. Oh his number. Oh his number. <laughs> oh his number. Keep going, keep going around. Yeah, yeah, that's the main one right there. This fresh cut in there too. Yeah. Yeah. I chose Hopkins for kind of a couple reasons. One, for going through my, you know, the rest of my academic career and pursuing the career in teaching. So I wanted to, you know, if I had a year to play in grad school, I wanted to use it. And then two, it was the familiarity kind of with the coaching staff and, and also um, some of the, the culture pieces that Coach Millman and, and Kester and all the other coaches have preached to me throughout my kind of recruiting and then being here this first month of togetherness and, and being a tight-knit group I think really resonated with me and, and there were some similarities um, from my uh, former school that you know I kind of aligned with. I decided to come back to Hopkins this fall. Truly, I got a taste of the real world this summer working as a full intern. Looking back, you can't beat these relationships. You can't beat morning practice. You can't beat walking around the locker room, the guys, the camaraderie day to day. It's, it's just something special and I don't want to look past it. I'm living day to day right now. All right, this is the hospitality suite. A lot of people like to do schoolwork here. Clearly, everyone's getting a little busy. Who is the smartest guy in this room? Yeah. Me. No, 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 not me. Ladies, what is it like working with these guys? In here, do you guys get to work on? No, rarely. This is the balcony of the quarter center. This is where a lot of us uh, come out and do some schoolwork, meet with coaches, meet with academic advisors, consultants, try and get as much work done as possible, but also enjoy the weather and the beautiful Homewood view. Yeah, I think the coolest part too is sometimes there'll be games going on here. So if you see, you're looking out there, like you watch soccer, you lock into these sports. I think it's pretty awesome to get that experience where a lot of schools don't even have that. Here we have the film room. Well, we're meeting in here before every single practice, uh, before our lifts too. And this is where we chop it up for game film. Beginning of the season, we're going to put all the logos of the other teams we have up there. This actually illustrates a lot for us, um, whether we're doing well or if we're not doing so hot. So Stuff don't lie. I mean, you watch the tape right there, then you see the numbers. So I know where to hide or run from. Who's your favorite teammate? Marcelo Ortega by far. Mr. Miami, Mr. Worldwide. Um, you'll hear him definitely on Fridays in the weight room. Get a little salsa going. I'll shout out a couple of the Rochester guys, Casey McDermott, 33, and uh, Logan Callahan, number five, and then uh, my roommate, Bowden, number 44. It's, it's a really good, good group of guys and uh, excited, excited for this year. So here we got the training facility. It's a gorgeous place right here. A lot of times you'll see guys every day, ice bath. It's nice to be out of that, such a privilege. And then again, people like to do stretching here and just get right before practice or games, and it's awesome, so. 5K likes, Pelkey's gotta go in the ice bath. <laughs> Standing ball, 5K, let's go. Run it up, run it up. Who's yeah, in the training room the most? Right there. What about this guy? I even do this oh! thing out. <laughs> How tight is this team? Extremely tight. I mean, I've never been a part of something that feels more like a family outside of my own family. So um, I would do anything for these guys, and I know they would do the same for me. And it's just a great bond we all have and something I don't take for granted. So this locker right here belonged to a teammate of mine. He was a freshman when I was a sophomore. His name is Jeremy Huber. He wore number 19 one morning in early January of, of that season. We actually had plans to uh, scrimmage Loyola. Jeremy's roommate, Sam Demick Boye, woke up to, uh, to him having passed away um, in his sleep. Jeremy was a kid who always had a smile on his face. We all called him Big Bird because he was a big, smiley, big hair young man who had a lot of passions even outside of lacrosse. Was an unbelievable musician, really dedicated to his work academically. And now we have passed the number 19 down to a young man who represents some similar things. This was a special class, um, that's for sure. The, 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 the freshmen when I was sophomores, and those guys, this, this certainly means a lot to them as well. To the left in the quarter center, we have the National uh, Championship Showcase trophies. We got some Big Ten accomplishments down low. Right here, we got the, the rivalry trophy. Whoever wins the Hopkins versus Maryland rivalry game takes us home. We got the J. You can't step on the J, none of that. So starting here, we got the National Championship staircase too. We got all the dates going up, leading to the top, and it just shows the wins. What's your guys' favorite Johns Hopkins tradition? 
One that I really like um, is called the Smoker. Um, the Smoker is the night before the first contest in the spring of every year. Uh, the Smoker is something we do to start the season every year in, in the beginning of January. It's a night that alum come back, everybody dressed up in a suit, and, and there's a there's an MC, a guy who kind of like runs the show and does a PowerPoint about the current team and, and, and the former teams that are there. But really the core of the night is the alums who wore your number pass your number down to you. So it's a big event, there's a guest speaker, and. A lot of the alums come back and kind of hand over their jerseys that they wore. Being able to be in a room with a bunch of people the night before your first game and knowing that they have your back is um, is a special feeling going into that first one. So uh, I think the the song after after games on Homewood is, is pretty great. It's awesome to be out there with all your teammates holding hands with your arms around each other while the band the pep band plays plays a song. I think it's a really great tradition. The tr the tradition that I'm probably the most proud of at Johns Hopkins is when the alumni come back. My favorite tradition here, I'd say probably the pregame meals at Sammy's. It's just something we all look forward to every week and just being able to go eat with your guys and laugh and have great food and it's just a great tradition where we all come together before a game and get ready to, to play the next day. Well, I'll ask you a couple questions. Wait, I don't know how to record. It's already going. It is? Yeah, it's already yeah. going. I'm Sam Prairie, owner of Sammy's Trattoria 1 and Sammy's Trattoria 2. Right, it's my first time here. I gotta say it's better than my mom's cooking. That's something. Kids are big fans? My kids are huge fans of this. I love that. I appreciate it. This is a huge staple for Johns Hopkins men's lacrosse. Team. Incredible tradition. Um, and I've, I've been extremely fortunate to feed the team and be a part of, of Hopkins lacrosse. I grew up in the area, so I grew up as a kid, like, you know, I'd have given a digit to play at Hopkins. Yeah. So for me to be a part of the program and to be able to feed them and, and to, you know, do right by the kids, it's, it's been an incredible pleasure. Sammy's is, uh, is, is first of all, the best Italian restaurant in Baltimore. But it's much more than that. It's where you'll go, you know, freshman year moving. It's where you'll go the night before every game. When I graduated our class, like, we were at Sammy's. And, and Sammy's, Sammy wasn't cooking. He was at the table. All right, we got Val here, our favorite here at Sammy's. The Hopkins kids are amazing. Well-mannered, respectful, great players, and we love them to death. Tossing the banana. After our games, there's a band that comes and there's a there's a group that wears yellow shirts. The top three people at the game, like yeah. some guy will come out, chuck bananas to it. So call our names and all of us are standing there, arm in arm, tossing bananas to us. You have to catch it. Our coaches are on this side of the hallway. We got Coach Crawley up here. This is the BK Lounge. BK Lounge. This is where it's This at. is as good as it gets in here. So Coach Brian Kelly's in here. He's our uh, goalie coach. They threw him back here. He's got his own place. This is where he uh, chops up film for the goalies, figures out their practice plans, and gets them right. He's yeah. got the best spot. He's yeah, got, yeah, he's he's got, got the, the best spot. spot. I know. Yeah. This is the big man's office, oh. Coach Melliman. What type of conversation did you have with the big man? The big man is more, it's more life conversations. It's usually never lacrosse related. Yeah, that's cool. Like if I got like some conduct violation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got what, one more back there. Who's that? This is Coach Gary right here. This is the guy. This is the guy, man. I love this guy. It's good. Fuck <laughs> you guys still. Yeah. Yeah. What's it like coaching these two? Easy. Easy. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Don't have to coach effort. Don't have to coach care. They got it. They we're really not challenging the ball. With the exception of Hunter Jaronski, Marcelo at times, and Zach Claiborne, we're just not challenging the ball. We're not getting the mitts. We're not closing on getting to the waist of Dodgers. Guys are moving freely way too close to the goal. Guys have their hands free in dangerous areas. Just doesn't look the right way communicating through our spacing and making sure two guys aren't in the same spot, or you're communicating with someone early enough to exchange with them, to scream with them, um, allows us to have outlets. But at the end of the day, it's a decision to be an outlet rather than lose. Ow! All right, here we go. Jason, three, one, two, three. Jason! Yes. Lastly, what can we expect out of Hopkins lacrosse this year? You're going to get some, some competitive individuals running around on that field. It's a group that's committed to each other. It's a group that's committed to, to winning. And that's the biggest thing is like, are they committed to each other in that locker room? When you have that, like that's, that's a great foundation. They're going to compete. You know, they're going to play hard each and every whistle. You have a culmination of some grad students from other programs. You've got some fifth years that have been here through it all, through the pandemic, through a coaching change. Competitive play, hard work, 
toughness, selling out for our teammates and doing whatever it takes to win. There is 60 collective guys that have a genuine burning passion to play the cross for this team. So I think that starting point is just going to lead us deep into May this year. The goal is to keep getting better every day, get ourselves on the game field in a position to be successful. We want to be working to, to compete for conference and national championships every year. So that's the goal again for this year. I want people to expect just a, a hard-nosed team that's, that's going to you know, fight for every inch. I think people can expect a lot of big things, a lot of hard workers on the field, a lot of energy. It's going to be a lot of fun and we, we can't wait. Thoughts on Coach K's acting career? Huh. Oh, he hates to talk about it. He's a great, he's a great actor. <laughs> Heard he's pretty good, but uh, maybe, maybe you can get some other like short film work coming in here, so. <laughs> Nobody really mentions it too much. They do want to watch the film on a bus trip, and I told them that if we win a certain game, then then they can watch whatever they want on the bus. So he's got like three minutes of camera time. You know, he's not no movie star. Right? He's coaching lacrosse. He's good at it too. We'll stick to that.